Good morning. It's Saturday, July 31st, 2021. So, according to my math, it's 48 years since Roe versus Wade was a landmark decision of the United States Supreme Court, in which the court ruled that the Constitution of the United States protects a pregnant woman's liberty to choose to have an abortion without excessive government restriction. And now, with this ultra-conservative Supreme Court in place, we have almost 230 Republican senators and congressmen urging them to overturn that decision. Now, it seems to me that this is a two-faced thing. We are allowing people to run around this country and not get vaccinated because they have rights. But we want to take rights away from women. The right to choose. Why? Why are one person's rights different than another's? If we allow idiots to run loose in this country claiming rights and not get vaccinated and put not only themselves and their families in harm's way, but anybody who might run into them in the street or shopping or something. And now we got 228 senators and congressmen urging the Supreme Court to do something about it. Where are these 228 congressmen urging the people who claim they have rights to do the right thing and wear a mask and get vaccinated. It's not working that way. This is a very political situation. And these Republicans are kowtowing to members of their constituency who they believe will re-elect them because they're taking this stand against abortion rights. And I can only hope that the Supreme Court does the correct thing. This is precedent. This law has been in place for 48 years. You don't overturn something like that just because some politicians are urging you to do something. And if that happens because of these politicians, then we don't really have a Supreme Court. We don't have a Supreme Court with any backbone. We don't have a Supreme Court that acts in accordance to the Constitution and defends all kinds of rights in the Constitution. I want to see these 228 congressmen and congresswomen running there and trying to overturn the Second Amendment, the right to bear arms, which it really doesn't say that everybody can own a gun. It talks about a well-regulated militia. But we have 30,000, over 30,000 gun deaths a year. I don't see any congressmen and women running to tell the Supreme Court to overturn the Second Amendment. It's a very political situation, and it shouldn't be allowed. And it certainly shouldn't be out there in the public view. But these people in Congress are only concerned with one thing, getting reelected. They're not concerned with doing the right thing. They're only concerned with getting reelected and keeping their jobs. And that's what's wrong. That's wrong. And if they succeed in getting this Roe versus Wade overturned, and they succeed in making this an issue that the states take care of, then they are attacking the poorest people in this nation. Because if you have money, you can afford to go and pick yourself up and move to another state for a week or two weeks or whatever the requirement is and get an abortion. But if you're a poor person, you're screwed because you don't have the money to get an abortion. So this is not only rights in general, it's rights that will specifically harm the poorer segments of our society. And that's not right. We are supposed to be a nation of equals, but we know that's not true. Some are more equal than others. We have seen that over the years. And this is another instance 
where our representatives, our so-called representatives, are calling for the Supreme Court to do something. And that is out of their domain, so to speak. They have no business publicly urging the Supreme Court to do something. Now, this case was brought before the Supreme Court based upon the false assumption that a baby, a fetus, is viable and can live outside the womb at 15 weeks. And as far as I know, the world record for living outside the womb was 21 weeks. No baby born younger than 21 weeks ever lived to see the rest of his life. And the governor, the Mississippi governor, Tate, is his name, makes his proclamation, has the nerve to stand up there as if he's a medical expert and makes the proclamation that 15 weeks is okay. We'll give you 15 weeks to decide that you can have an abortion. Otherwise, you're screwed. What a way. What a way to run a country. This is ridiculous. This thing's been on the books for 48 years. It's not really harming anybody. And they, the 228 Republicans, want to take this away from people. Why don't they stand up and say it's a woman's rights and let's forget about this whole thing? They can't say that because they're afraid. They're terrified of their constituencies. And I'm not sure their entire constituencies agree with them anyhow. And so to me, with all the other problems that we have in this country, Roe versus Wade should not be a big problem. We have a lot of more important issues than that in my mind. We're still fighting a pandemic. Why aren't these people, these 228, urging their constituents to get vaccinated? Why aren't they demanding that the states all have a mask mandate. Because they believe that that's rights, that those people have rights. Well, if they have rights, women have rights, and you can't be taking rights away from one group of people and letting other people run rampant, ruining this country, putting everybody in danger because they have rights too. It's a right, it's a right, it's a right. And you have to live with both sides of the coin. So if you want to protect the rights of one group, then you have to protect the rights of all groups. And I believe that Roe versus Wade is one of those situations where the Supreme Court should just say it's precedent, it's established, it's done. We don't want to hear about it anymore. But maybe we're going to find out that the Supreme Court is no longer what it was meant to be. It is not an independent body. For whatever reason, it is now a political pawn of the party in charge. So that's all I have to say this morning, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.